Hey, real quick, good morning. Have you ever heard of a monopsony? Strange word, but it's when a company or a small handful of companies have an internal monopoly. So most of us have heard of monopoly, not the game, uh, but when a company or a couple of companies can control the market in terms of buyers, right? External clients. Well, monopsony is when a company or a couple of companies control the market in terms of how much people are getting paid their employees or how much they're paying for contracts or vendors. Interestingly enough, last year, Penguin Random House and Simon & Schuster uh, tried to merge and become one huge company. And in case you didn't know it, there are only about five major publishers in the country. I shouldn't even say in the country, basically in the world at this point, And they control a lot of the market for books. Well, if these two had joined together, we would have been down to four, a little bit scary. And they would have had so much influence and control over what authors are paid. The only reason I'm talking about that this morning is because often I refer to gatekeeping in the publishing industry. And it seems sort of like a confusing or mysterious theory. But this is one of the ways that it happens. That, and not accidentally. It's very intentional when power combines to make superpower, right? And so it's already very tough as an author to get picked up to get signed, to get an advance of any reasonable amount, and then to get paid a fair share of your royalties for your book, right? It's already really tough. The fewer major publishing houses there are, the harder it will become to negotiate. It's already nearly impossible for many sectors of the community that are not mainstream, that are not super popular in terms of what we're used to seeing in literature. And it was about to get much harder. So, you know, there's, I, I'm not political about this. Um, there have been thoughts all over the place on what the Supreme Court is doing, but this actually seems like a really solid decision. They made a decision to ensure that free market economy can persist in the way that we can control the market. When I say we, I mean the collective we buyers, um, the demand, instead of letting a handful of companies decide who gets published, what gets published, and how much anyone is allowed to make um, from their publishing deal. So just wanted to shed a little light on that. It was a huge deal, but it seems to have gone almost not talked about in the publishing circles that I'm in with the smaller publishers and with people still sort of clamoring to try to get their book picked up. Just know that a decision was made in 2022 that helps even the playing field for you, or at least keep it somewhat even, and didn't make it harder for you to get picked up and signed. But there's always self-publishing and small independent publishing for those of you who would like to divest and unplug from the machine. The fact that those two even decided to try to merge is indicative of something that's happening. There's a huge disruption that is hitting the book business, that is small independent publishers like ourselves, self-publishing, the, the way that we can directly market to your buyers, your readers, your audience without having to get a book deal, without having to slog through the two, sometimes three year process of getting signed, negotiating, scrapping it out for pennies on the dollar in terms of sale, and then hoping that you get a reasonable marketing budget. All of that is being cut out by the way that social media, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, allows you to find your readers and give them directly what they want. And so, yeah, the publishing houses have some competition that they probably did not anticipate. And so they're trying to join forces. So shout out to Supreme Court for this one, for preventing the monopsony and allowing us to survive to fight another day.